The earth has a cure for forgetting and the earth has a cure for connection and that that is mushrooms. Welcome to the Flowering She Rose Budcast, a space devoted to the divine feminine rising within each of us. My name is Anahita and I'm here to bridge plant and human consciousness as we gather in this virtual garden and explore how plants can guide us in our lives as multidimensional human beings. It's my prayer that these personal stories, transmissions, and medicine music may remind you of the sacredness of this magical life and the power that lies in your intuitive nature. We're so glad you're here. Hi friends, welcome back to episode 6 of the Flowering She Rose podcast. And today's episode is all about a really important topic for today's times, the medicine of connection and how the spirits of mushrooms can help us to remember that we're all connected. Today's guest is Dolly Sorensen. She is a teacher of mushroom medicine and she lives in the Sierra foothills of California with her husband and her two sons. And I'd like to start off with a quote from one of her newsletters. What is the medicine of connection? It is the unseen becoming seen, connecting to hidden realms. It is the expansion of our realities by healing our consciousness through connection to nature. When I asked Dolly to share a bio with me, she sent me a beautiful passage that didn't have any labels. Dolly followed her budding intuition down the rabbit hole of consciousness, widening her being and expanding her reality. She's experienced the quantum leaps of transformational healing, having her life change overnight by syncing up with her most authentic self merging with the mycelium of the planet. In a dream, she made an Amanita Muscaria essence and reenacted that dream in waking life the next day. And in an attunement with the essence, she saw decomposition, branching mycelium, and a primitive yet futuristic women-led village in the forest. Since then, she's sought out the village seen in her vision with the mushroom acting as her guide. She learned that the mushroom is the medicine for a new world, leading the way in healing our bodies, our imaginations, in order to grow and connect in an earth-based culture. Um, and she's also started making her own medicine with wild foraged mushrooms. And one of these is her Amanita Muscaria essence that she was making in that dream. And on our show's Patreon, she's going to be giving away a bottle of this essence. So check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash flowering she rose if you would like to support the show and have access to additional bonus content and also these giveaways. The giveaway for this um, Amanita Muscaria essence is going to end on October 22nd. So this episode is being released on September 22nd and uh, the winner will be announced on Patreon. And at this point you have really good chances. There's currently one Patreon supporter out there. So go for your luck. You have access to these giveaways starting at the $5 a month level. Speaking about Patreon, I've decided to share my one experience that I had taking psilocybin, also adding some additional audio content from this interview where Dolly and I talk more about the science of the mushroom, because I know that at least locally here, many of my friends have never journeyed with a mushroom and nor any other psychedelics. And before I had done so, I was really curious. Yeah, so there's more interesting facts waiting there for you, and I'm going to be publishing that for anybody who checks out our Patreon page. So without further ado, let's welcome Dolly to the show. This is so much fun. Thank you, Anna. Dolly and I connected over Instagram and your 
feed is just full of pictures of mushrooms and <laughs> vegetables and flowers that you've um, foraged or harvested from your own garden and sharing about your dreamy life. Tell us how you got to that dreamy space that you're living in now, where you came from, how your life changed in these past couple of years. It, it has been so, so very recent. And in the midst of the transformation, I was like continually like asking myself, like, am I, am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? Because for the first time in my life, I really understood what it meant to be awake while dreaming. My life took on this incredibly surreal quality and everything just really got super shiny. And I explain it as going through a portal through which the mushroom led me. Um, and the life you see on my feed is the reflection of every single one of my heart desires, which is living close to the earth and living from my joy and my excitement and my passion. How long have you been living where you're at now? I'm a little over two years. Before that, I had had just several really massive life changes. Um, I was living in an old part of town or it was a small city. And that is where I really realized that I needed to create the life I wanted instead of waiting for it to happen. Because at the time I was just so hungry for homesteading and having chickens. And I had this epiphany that I could do that where I was at, but just in a small scale. So I had a compost pile and I was doing what I could to live sustainably and to be as, I guess, homesteadery as possible. So I was making sourdough, I was fermenting vegetables and brewing kombucha. And that's where I really first planted my first medicine garden. I ripped out the little bit of lawn that existed and I planted flowers and vegetables and I feel like that was the very first time that I connected with the medicine that I needed by creating the medicine that I needed. Hmm. And um, I had gotten married as a young Mormon woman and went through all of those, those prescribed acts that were external and placed upon me. And I submitted because I wasn't able to question that reality at the time, even though I lived with depression and I lived with anxiety and I lived in a big stucco suburban McMansion with my really um, hardworking husband at the time. And um, I always felt really guilty because I was totally cared for. There was a great deal of money in the bank. I didn't have to do anything. And, and I didn't know why I was so sad. I was so sad. Um, I had grown up in the woods. I grew up pretty wild with 12 brothers and sisters out in the countryside. I'm talking like barefoot, litters of kittens, clothesline type thing. Um, church every Sunday. And so living in suburbia really stirred something inside of me that I was, I was, I was angry. I was angry. Um, and at the birth of my second child, all of my anxiety and depression just came to a place where I literally thought I was falling apart. And what this was, was a deep healing crisis from up until that point, living deep within Mormonism and not being able to question it. And I had this moment, I was, I was feeling so, so upset. I don't know what your experience after childbirth was, but I had what the doctor said was postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. Uh, they were giving me all sorts of really insane pharmaceuticals. And I was like, this isn't going to fix me. And I went and did craniosacral therapy and the woman was touching my body and she was like, wow, you have a lot of anger in your liver. And I was like, wow, I had no idea. Like I had no idea. And then it, 
this flash of insight went through me and I like just woke up at that moment. I was like, I have never actually believed in Mormonism, but I have lived my whole life this way. And I connected with a flower essence practitioner. And one of the essences she gave me was, was walnut, which allows you to kind of make your own choices without external authority. And uh, I kind of just went from there. I left that marriage. I left that house. I embarked on a journey of organic farming up in the foothills, sharing a bedroom with both of my children on the other side of town, working really crappy kitchen jobs and just like failing really, really hard and being really broke and wondering what I had done. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. So I would say flower essences helped me, helped me uncover who I was without the lens or the clothing of Mormonism, because that's all I had ever known. So at 25 and 26, I'm kind of just starting, starting over. Um, It all is just like, I'm so thankful I had the courage to do that, to step into something that was so unknown, because my life feels so rich and so deep and so magical and it existed and it was waiting for me. It was waiting for me to discover it. So that's why I felt, I think, motivated at a soul level to continue, even though it was just incredibly scary. Wow. Yeah. You've come a long way. And now one day you you shared the story of how you met with your current new husband. And um, I remember just crying because it gave me so much hope. And um, I was wondering if you could share that. I started dreaming about the mushroom, like in a really big way, after I started making my own flower essences from the garden that I grew in my urban front yard. And in my dream, I'm walking through the forest floor, I'm carrying a basket, the sunlight dappled upon me, and I feel so complete and I'm hunting the mushroom in my dream, just foraging. I woke up that next morning and the first thing I did was message somebody I had known for about 10 years, but really distantly. This is somebody I bumped into at the farmer's market or had a humanities class with at the local community college. And he was a mycologist and he did mushroom forays for the forest service and um, foraged mushrooms for restaurants and cultivated mushrooms. And he had a partner at the time. And I was just like, Hey, I need to be with the mushroom. So next time you go out foraging, can I, can I, can I tag along please? Like, like, please. (laughs) And he messaged me right away. He's like, yeah, let's meet up here and we'll go. And I was like, oh, I am so excited. I just felt like, yes, I'm going to go be with the mushroom because I have always loved the mushroom. I have always been foraging. I have my own field guides. I've always tried to teach myself. I always went to the mushroom fairs and I was ready to just, to just learn more. And we met up to go for this mushroom hunt And I was thinking I'd be tagging along with his like botanist and, you know, biologist buddies. And it was, it was just him and it was just me. And we drove up a little higher in elevation because it was June. And I had, I had zero expectation, but his car was just littered with like field guides of trees and Mm -hmm. flowers and mushrooms. And I just like, And this person was so handsome. I had never seen anyone so beautiful in my life. And I was, my heart was pounding so fast. And I, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening because I just felt so shaky and so excited. But I was actually with, I was actually dating an anthropology professor at the time. And I was just like committed in that relationship And he and I went mushroom hunting and something just, I had to put my hands in my pocket so I wouldn't reach out and touch him. I felt like, (laughs) like, I'm going to make this person uncomfortable. And we hiked up to a meadow that was just, just filled with bear poop and butterflies (laughs) and wildflowers. And we sat 
Um, <laughs> and, and I knew I wasn't going to go home. <laughs> And I just was like, is this everything that I've been wishing for? Like, I don't know what's happening. And um, we just we just ended up making out. Um, like, I held his beautiful face in my hands and I was crying and he was laughing. And he was like, let's just stay here and build a cabin. <laughs> and I was like, okay. We've been together ever since. And we moved into the woods two months later. To me, I feel like the mushroom was this gatekeeper that was leading the way that I didn't have the courage to take those steps because it just, I didn't even have this, the sense of faith that something so wonderful could happen. But I, I followed those nudges. I have goosebumps and tears in my eyes hearing that story. And just to add another layer to the magic of this story, the Musician that I connected with for today's episode, Justine Quetzal, she lives in Nevada City in California. She also regularly posts pictures of herself by the Yuba River. And uh, and so do you, Dolly, right? And so Justine is currently working on her second album to be released in 2020. And she ser- shared a song with me that is still in the making that hasn't been released yet. And it's called Rêve, which means dream in French. And it is about or inspired by her own love story because she too first met her current husband in her dream. And she shared with me that in... Uh, their wedding, which was earlier this year. She also performed that unfinished song. It's accompanied by the piano. Go check her out at justinequetzal.com. You'll find the link in the show notes and a few more words about her. Justine's originally from Quebec and uh, she works in the field of movement, art, and music. She is deeply inspired by indigenous wisdom teachings and ceremonies and um, her journeys to different parts of the world and also deep within herself have opened her mind and helped her free spirit expression to unfold. And so now her music is a clear reflection of her personality, which encompasses gentleness and audacity. And she says, I always knew that I had songs sleeping inside of me and I started to hear them once I began to fully believe in myself. Dans un rêve j'ai vu notre histoire se déployer devant mes yeux à mon réveil tout T'es parti en fumée me laissant cela avec un vague souvenir de ton naissance mais où te caches-tu dans cet univers si grand puis le jour où j'ai croisé ton Regard, j'ai su, je t'ai reconnu Et ce moment s'est figé dans la glace du temps La vie nous sépara sans qu'on le veuille D'autres expériences nous attendaient Avant qu'une autre rêve puisse commencer Ouh, ouh, ouh. Rêve, tu m'as dit de ne pas avoir peur De regarder à l'intérieur de moi-même De faire face à ma noirceur Agenouiller seul au fond du silence Avec la lampe de ma conscience à la main Brillante, illuminant le chemin Je me sentais à des années lumière De pouvoir revoir ton visage, sentir ton Torse contre le mien, ce futur semblait si lointain, laissant passer les journées sans compter. La vie nous a surpris, enfin réunis, ensemble nous pourrons rêver. Je me réveille à l'aube, le soleil brille sur l'océan, des larmes coulent sur ma joue, comme la rosée sur l'herbe du printemps. Je chante la victoire, la beauté de ce monde nouveau. Mon esprit grande avec la force de mille chevaux au galop Il ne se peut qu'être vrai cet amour que
que je ressens Car contre vents et marées La survécu l'épreuve du temps Des filles en toute raison Traversant le rythme des saisons N'en faisant ni peu ni trop Laissant tout couler comme un ruisseau Did you have a practice of acting upon your dreams when you had that dream about the mushroom? I mean, it, it sounds like you were, um, you know, already in tune with with your dream world and and also already inviting the mushroom into your life in general. What made it shift? What do you think, like, caused that that portal to open, basically? There's several. There are several several factors, but. Ultimately, there was there was a widening and a deeper healing, and I think the miracle happened is when I finally finally realized I was worthy of healing, and that was that was something that took place when I started making a sweet pea <laughs> essence. But the year before, I had this dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hope your listeners are like really into magic because that's what this is all about. After I left my financial security and my marriage, my, I just was so broke and so, so unsure of how to support myself and my children. And I felt like I was a failure and I went back to school full time. because I was like, I will finish this degree in, you know, social services. And, um, and so I started serving at a restaurant to just be that single mom going to school, waiting tables. And it was, it was a lot of hard work and I felt just drained and I didn't have any, any creative spark whatsoever. And I was working at a restaurant in a strip mall because where I was at, it's an area of Sacramento that is very suburban. It's consumer culture. There isn't a lot of room for community or art. It's just Costco. And uh, it was December. I was taking a break from my shift and I was walking around because there was a ginkgo tree nearby and its leaves were so yellow. And I was watching the sunset. And this is just how I kept saying was just to, to be outside and walk the little strip of uh, wood chips and planted trees in the parking lot and just breathe. And um, I had walked this many times. And I'd like to preface the story by saying I have been looking for psychoactive active mushrooms for about 10 years because I have been a, fun, a fungi hobbyist. But I was walking and then I had this moment where I looked down. And when once there was just wood chips all of a sudden was this whole patch of a mushroom called Psilocybe alenii and Psilocybe cyanensis. And I knew exactly what I was seeing. These are found in the wild psychoactive mm. mushrooms. I think maybe people assume that because I, I preach about psychedelia and I love mushrooms that I'm tripping all the time, but that's not necessarily the case. I'm just such a supporter of these medicines 
But I kind of dropped to my knees because I was in shock and wonder of just like, wow, I felt their power. And under my nose was this whole world of medicine. And like I said, it was December. So everybody's all around me with their, their shopping carts and they're, they're mad consuming and they're not even thinking about what they're doing. And uh, it has been said that these mushrooms grow where they are needed most, like suburban strip malls and the wood chips. And I just thought if everybody could stop and eat one of these mushrooms, it would just be incredible. So finding those mushrooms really, I felt like was an initiation of like, wow, I'm being shown another dimension, another reality. And then it was the year after that, that I had the dream about the mushroom that led me to mm -hmm. my partner. Um, but yeah, as far, as far as like really being prompted by dreams, um, I was pretty new to acting on them. And the more I act on them, the more I expand the depth of the reality that I live in now because it connects multiple realms. That's really beautifully said. I'm curious that day that you found those mushrooms in the wood chips, did you gather some and try them yourself? I did take some and I dried them because I, I'm a big fan of microdosing. Um, just a nibble here and there, even if it's not felt in the physical body, it's still having that intelligence and that energy be a part of your makeup. Yeah. So I did eat them and I did make uh, my very first mushroom essence mm. <laughs> because I was like, wow, what a powerful medicine. What a powerful medicine for the people who don't want to eat this, but still want to work with the energy of this. And I was like, wow, mushroom essences. And um, it was a breakthrough. It was huge. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of anybody else that makes mushroom essences. It seems like really unique. Like it's your, your medicine. That's something I really believe. I feel like if you if you are open and have that intention, you will connect with the medicine of yourself. You will connect with mm. the medicine that you need. And then so often the medicine that you need and then embody is the medicine that you carry in the world for others as well. That's exactly it. The, the mushroom later brought me to a place called Spirit Weavers, which is a woman's village here uh, on the West Coast in Southern Oregon. And... Um, it had been a place that had been on my radar radar for such a long time because it it spoke to me at such a deep level. And the mushroom brought me there. And then like for the first time in my life, I was truly seen. And I truly felt like I had returned to a soul home. And I was so grateful. And like my faith was restored. Like, wow, I'm really on my path because um, I, I taught a class about mushrooms. I teach classes about uh, the local medicinal mushrooms that are found in the area and the preparation and, and the, the current research behind um, these, these mushrooms and how to prepare them. So mushrooms like reishi and turkey tail and lion's mane and the benefits they have in our body um, as they are the tenders of the earth and the organizers of the forest when we ingest the fruiting bodies of this mycelium we are ultimately ingesting the intelligence of the earth and her systems and it's just it's just pretty incredible and i am such a believer could you explain some more how how this works, what's the mycelium and why is it storing the intelligence of the forest and of the earth? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've heard mycelium described as the wood wide net <laughs> or the wood wide web. Oh, no, I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> it's a network. It's a, it's a sentient network built from hyphae, which are mycelial, um, cells and they connect to each other. So when you go out and look at a forest, you're walking on top of this unseen network yet connects everything underneath you. And so when you see a mushroom pop out of the ground, you are seeing what's visible 
of this unseen network. So I like to say that you were seeing the unseen made seen. And I think that's why mushrooms have such a mysterious magical power because they are, they are proof of this sentient connection. So a typical or an example of a mycelial relationship is that of a mycorrhizal species like Amida muscaria or the fly agaric. This is a mushroom that is uh, the iconic mushroom and the one I see most commonly in my dreams. Mm. It's got a red cap with white spots. You know this one? Oh, yes. Um, I'll add it's called Fliegenpilz in German for any of my German friends listening. <laughs> Can you say that again? Fliegenpilz. And Fliegen means fly and pilz is the word for mushroom. Oh my goodness. Okay, that is so cool. So yeah, the fly agaric and its its scientific name is Amanita muscaria. They grow in relationship with conifers. So when we are talking about symbiosis, when we are talking about mutualism, there are some species that do not exist without the reciprocation of each other. Amanita muscaria grows in uh, mycorrhizal relationships with conifer trees. And so there's an exchange of carbon and sugars. And when, when these mushrooms pop up, this is the mycelium body fruiting mm. and sporing. Um, it's really exciting. And mushrooms are also decomposers. So forests need to be broken down. What was once alive will will fall, fall away like a log. The mushrooms are part of this this decomposing um, element. And ultimately, this is the work of resurrection. It takes what is no longer alive, what is no longer useful, and returns it back to the forest, back to the system as accessible nutrients while, you know, breaking it down. So when we think of the overall metaphor, think about being having something old, broken down to allow new growth once again. So when we talk about mushrooms, it is the medicine of resurrection and just, just recycling. It is when I say you are ingesting the earth's intelligence, mushrooms are like the caretakers of the planet. They, they go and grow where there have been burns, where there have been just disturbances. Um, they break up through old concrete. They're just so exciting. (laughs) It's so fascinating. Um, This world unseen. I'm wondering whether they have that effect, I'd say on like more, a more spiritual esoteric level as well as, as far as their teachings for us go. Uh, Obviously there's so many different kinds of mushrooms, but um, if their general role has to do with composting and decomposing, is that, generally something that they'll do for you too if you start to work with them either as an essence or in or by eating them yes um so when i started working with mushroom essences i learned that they were primarily like the medicine for for shadow work and and for integration of of shadow for more authentic being um and then if you're taking something like reishi or turkey tail uh those are adaptogenic mushrooms so they restore your body to its own homeostasis so if your body is growing cancer or if it's hormones or out of whack or if you if you're growing too much stress the mushrooms allow the body to be at its at its healthiest and as immunomodulators so they bring they bring you basically to where you need to be and they allow your body to be its own healer and if you're talking about um the power of psychedelic mushrooms wow um i call them wonder medicine because they jump you out of ruts of thinking because our mind is the only way we perceive reality so if your thoughts are small If your thoughts are old, if your thoughts are shaped by external influences, then your world is small. Your reality is small. Um, And I believe that a medicine is anything that shifts your consciousness and widens your reality. 
I did an Amida Muscaria essence attunement and I saw a village. So when I work with mushrooms and the, the, the work I do with the mushrooms, I see, I see village life. Mm. I see all of us connected, Mm. right? We are all connected. We do not exist without each other. And when we show up in these different villages, we are the fruiting body of this sentient hidden network and showing up to heal different parts of the world, wherever we're at. Wow. I think that's addressing one of the most important issues of our time, at least in our culture and society. Like one of the biggest wounds is isolation as I see it. And it's, it's actually a topic that I has been coming up for myself and my friends. Just today, I was talking to my friend who's who's like, yeah, I know that I should be living in community and I've known it for years, but how do I get there? And people are, at least in my surroundings, are realizing that the future is going back to being more connected and not in these these boxes and nuclear families the question that keeps coming up is how do we get there? That's something I think about a lot. And I'm glad you said that because I feel like that's actually one of the main components of my work is community, is the village. Um, Something that came to me was that the old world isn't, isn't falling apart. What we're doing is we are building the new world. Um, when I was at this gathering, Spirit Weavers last year, I was given a zine uh, published by um, an anarchist collective from San Francisco, but it was one of the best gifts I had ever been given because it was an instruction manual. <laughs> and it's called uh, Inhabit Instructions for Autonomous Living. And it says, Step one, find each mm-hmm. other. You know, step two, establish hubs. So step one is find each other. And to me, this is what I feel like is some of the biggest work of the mushroom because capitalism has isolated us. And And something that I have learned is that mushrooms give us a cure for forgetting, forgetting that we are connected. So mushrooms, so many people who work with mushrooms, whether it's um, in a psychedelic sense or just in a... Um, like a, like working with like Rishi and Lion's Mane in physical tonics, there's more connection. It's the medicine of connection. We are better together. Isolation is a lie. Capitalism isn't working. So what I'm exploring is the mushroom's role in building what we might be able to call a utopia. Mm. Um, because we are the living network and mushrooms allow us to connect into the living network and together is when we, we build and heal because there's really only so much we can do by ourselves. <sighs> the soul sickness that's going on is what we see destroying our planet and what it really is is a forgetting of our connection. And my big goal is to organize a yearly gathering where sustainable skills our shared ancestral skills that we can bring into the future because I feel like that's a direct action I can take on building the new world and the mushroom is kind of leading the way. Yeah, but I think that what you were um, calling in and creating these villages, these gatherings where we can also feel the support of other sisters is is just truly nourishing and I like that that image that you have of just like saying, okay, this is the old system and I'm going to take the mushroom medicine and turn it into a compost pile because we know that it's not serving us and and really focusing on what it's time to build instead. You wrote something um, that I liked. You said that we need to learn how to work with others. This work does not happen when we hide I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm still holding that same desire to connect with, with my tribe locally that, you know, I know must exist because I know that everything's connected. And, and I'm wondering, like, is it because part of me is still hiding and, and is really afraid of that, 
that connection that we need in order to grow. And um, at the same time, there's nothing that I want more than connection. Yeah, we create our own realities. And with the help of the mushroom, we heal our imaginations and we give ourselves the opportunity to ask, what what kind of world do I want to live in? And then from there, we create that. And when I say, you know, we can't do it by ourselves, we have to show up to connect with other people. That's us overcoming the resistance we have that might come from self-doubt or the way we have grown up in a culture that is isolating because everybody's, you know, commuting, consuming, um, just kind of lost in the survival of capitalism. Um, so yeah, I did have a dream that I was at a gathering and we made an essence. And I think you're referring to that message I sent out and in my dream, somebody asked, well, what is the medicine of this essence we just made? And I was like, I shot my hand right up. I was like, I know, because it came to me immediately. And it said, sisterhood is the medicine of transformation. And stepping out of my comfort zone, stepping out of my comfort zone to share what I have learned has connected we, me with different individuals who have helped acknowledge me, ag- help me acknowledge myself and my medicine And that only happened when I was brave and stepped out of my comfort zone. Um, Something I learned from the mushroom is that on the other side of your fear is connection. And so when I was able to just show up, when it would have been so much easier to hide, I go to these gatherings and I teach. And so much of the time is like, I'm hiding in my my station wagon, like, oh, I can't do this. (laughs) And like, I make myself sick because I'm so afraid. And then once you get over that, it's pretty rad. You know, I have swam through rivers of self-doubt and I continue to do so, but I'm always so thankful that, that I have, and our fear is a pretty good indicator of, of what we should try to overcome or not overcome, but just embrace and move through. I've only ever been rewarded by moving through, Mm -hmm. moving through fear. If there are other people out there like me who are saying, oh, the mushrooms, sparking my interest um you know i'd like to connect with it more what are some um ideas that you have that's a great question i feel like uh especially with mushrooms once you you know put them in your consciousness like anything else they continue to show up so you might you know very recently see like advertisement for the local mycological society having a fungus foray, and then you're going to get on that. I don't know what your climate's like. I don't (laughs) know um, what your wilderness around you is, but I guarantee you there are mushrooms, you know. So if you're looking for mushrooms, find a local uh, mushroom hunt. Um, Mushrooms are speaking to so many people, and I feel like that's just part of the bigger work that's being done. This is an awakening. This is a remembering. And the mushroom, wow, you know, they are makers of change. And they are medicine for people who are like, like us who, who want to make change and who want to be supported in doing so because that is the very nature of their being. So um, go outside and look for mushrooms because they are literally everywhere. And it's a lot of fun to just be like, wow, you're so right. Because people go out and wildflower walk. To me, it's it's very similar to that, you know, and it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a treasure hunt. Yeah, actually that's something that my daughter and I started doing this summer, but we had a super dry summer. We live right by the forest and the fields. And so she would say, mama, where are the mushrooms? And I'd say, we need more rain, baby, because I mean, even the leaves on the trees were really droopy. And um, still here and there, we would see a, um, a mushroom growing on a log. And something that I was just wondering though, is like, <laughs> if, the medicine for, of connection is so needed and and it's the truth that we're all connected and we need each other. Then why aren't mushrooms like blackberries and you can just like go out and 
shove them into <laughs> into your mouth and your belly and um without needing to to be afraid of <laughs> poisoning yourself like my my daughter goes to forest preschool and she's learned we do not touch mushrooms unless we have a stick that we can kind of poke them with and um i think in general it's it's something that yeah needs to be respected but people are also just really fearful about and i guess my first question is if mushrooms are all about connection, then why do we have to be so careful? And, and number two, is the fear that we have um, valid? Or are we maybe too fearful of trying and, and foraging ourselves? Uh, mushrooms have always been mysterious, right? Mysterious ent entities. For as long as humans have been humans, they have been, mushrooms have been associated with with myth, like lightning, the underworld, death, poison. Um, so it's it's not a surprise that a lot of cultures are mycophobic. Mm. <laughs> it really just depends on where you're at because I grew up with the same thing. My grandpa had mushrooms popping out of his lawn. I'm a little girl and he goes, don't touch the toadstools, they're poisonous. <laughs> mm. And I think it's just a lack of information, mm. right? It's just a lack of information because now that I, I do hang out with more um, mycological minded <laughs> people, it's just like, wow, they're fascinating spirits of nature who hold a great deal of medicine. And Amanita muscaria is is grouped in like, oh, it's a toxic toadstool. But to be honest, Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric, is the tastiest mushroom I've ever had. And all you need is to boil it twice and then saute it. And it's delicious. Um, and I'm sure in your forest, like if it's not frosting yet, and if you get some rains, like, like I see some mushrooms in your future. I was in Alaska mushroom hunting last fall and I found Omnida muscaria everywhere. And I like, I took a bite. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't work with the, with the psychoactive aspect of the mushrooms all the time because I've had my butt kicked in some really amazing ways. And it's not like a place I need to go to all the time because I'm pretty connected to my dreams and my psychic self. Um, and I'm pretty aware of my wounds, but I took a bite of the Amida muscaria. I was going through the forest and the, the words that came into my mind mm -hmm. were deep connection cuts away all in truth. And this is a return to nature thing, but the closer we get to the earth, the closer we get to our truth, because everything that's been taught to us that isn't necessarily true falls away as we deepen that connection. What I've heard about Amanita muscaria, when you said you just went and took a bite, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so brave. Because um, in my mind, it's it has the power to take away your ability to hear and see so that you're like in, in pure just consciousness, not necessarily even able to move your body. Um, is that a misinformation? No, it's not. It, it can have a very like stupefying, like almost paralyzing effect. But like, I haven't taken those kind of doses. The kind of like when I say I'm a microdoser, <laughs> I, I work with the mushroom kind of daily, just having reishi in my body every day for somebody who was kind of like a tornado, lots of thoughts, having a hard time feel, feeling grounded. Like reishi is the original spirit lifter. You know, the Chinese call it the... Um, the spirit plant. Uh, so to be able to go out in the woods and find Rishi, find the medicine I need is um, really exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm going to muscaria. I'm really in love with this mushroom and um, my Omnita muscaria mushroom essence uh, speaks to a lot of people and they go, oh, I want this Omnita, I, I want to work with Omnita muscaria. And so I say, you know, take it at night and pay attention to your dreams and make sure you have a dream journal. Because the message I got from that essence and from that mushroom was that it's the medicine for those that are afraid of change. Hmm. Meaning if you're afraid of change, you're afraid of, you're afraid of breaking apart. You're afraid of growing. You're afraid of expanding. You are, you're pretty much stagnant and the mushroom pretty much eradicates all of that. Yeah. It's needed in these times. Dolly, I have a few questions that like a flash round of questions that I'd like to start asking 
all of my listeners. Are you ready? Yes. So first question, if you were an essence, what would you be? This is a really great question. I really liked your answer, by the way. Uh, Could you tell everybody what your answer was? (laughs) I saw it on your website. (laughs) I think it's clear quartz, mountain, stream, and daisy. Yes. He said an effervescent blend. (laughs) Oh, an effervescent. Mm -hmm. There's bubbles. Yeah. That's sweet. I think that's perfect. Um, If I were in essence, shoot. I've had people tell me that I look like a mushroom. (laughs) (laughs) But I would not say that I am the mushroom. (laughs) Um, Wow. I think it would be... I think it would be um, a rainbow essence. Mm. Maybe maybe rainbow mixed with bright blue morning glory. Mm. I love that. What is your current plant ally or mushroom ally? And what is it helping you with? Okay, yeah. Um, currently, my life is all giant marigold. And marigold is something that came into my life through connection with a farmer friend. And she's just so dreamy. Um, And Rishi, uh, which the species of Rishi that grows here in these mountains is Ganoderma oregonense. And um, yeah, so imagine the bright, roughly unapologetic orange of marigold and the soothing stress relieving um anxiety and depression healing reishi like those are the medicines i'm working with right now beautiful um my next question is how has nature been speaking to you lately like what have you been noticing in the seasons and in your local ecosystem we are nearing Uh, the autumnal equinox and I am just utterly perplexed at how it's not June right now. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like what, what, how is it September? And I live higher up in the elevation. So like I have pants on, I have sweater on. Um, I think I'm just noticing the turning. One of my dreams was to live in rhythm with the season. And I feel that shift in me. And it's more, I just feel like a deer smelling winter in the air, you know? Mm. (sighs) Wow. I feel like you have such a wealth of wisdom to share. I'm sure people are going to be like, I want to learn more from Dolly. Where can we find you? Well, the internet's a weird place but it is also the most magical place depending on how we want to employ it. So I do have a website. It's polycompost.com. But like, to be honest, I'm working really hard on rolling up my sleeves in my community and build village where I'm at. You can find me um, at polycompost on Instagram. I do have a shop page on my website where I share the medicines I have made for myself. Um, My goal is that my medicines assist in people's transformations and healing expansions. Mm. Even if, if what you're doing has to do with your local community, it is at the same time serving so many people that get to witness what you're doing and leading by example, even if we can't physically participate in your mushroom hunts and new moon picnics and gatherings and so on and so forth. It's really inspiring to see you gather. Yeah. Well, we should have a joint picnic. You can host a picnic where you're at or like a book club and I'll do it where I'm at. And then like that simultaneous impact will come together. And that's how we build those, those branching networks. Right. So I would invite you to step out and do that work. But to the listeners of this beautiful podcast, uh, you can stay in touch with me because I am planning a gathering for 2020. And um, it's the work I feel called to do in building another hub of sustainable 
village. Um, I did have a little uh, journey with the mushroom this summer. <laughs> and the download I got was like, create the container, mm. you know, just create the container for people to gather because then they can do a lot of their own healing work and then bring that back to the world. Mm. And I love your idea of having gathering simultaneously as far as it's possible. I've already been asking around if there's some women that are interested in doing a circle in nature for the autumnal equinox and to know you might be doing the same thing where you are in California that just amplifies the energy and I think it's a wave that would carry me through because it what's been hard for me is I have these ideas but to feel like I'm doing it by myself even if the, you're in California and I'm here in Wiesbaden in Germany it's like um a, a long distance um accountability or it's long distance village long distance village yeah so i know you can do it because i know you've got some really rad gifts and it would be so exciting to to have that that connection of intention yes yeah um is there anything else you would like to share about before ending um i feel excited i feel really big things happening um I feel like it's easy to get discouraged when I think about like the time frame of the planet and everything that is happening. Uh, my sweetie plays the mandolin and he always jokes and makes up a song and he goes, so much trouble in the world today. You know, what's a man to do? And he's just <laughs> like riffing off of every song about like every, every terrible thing that's happening. And then that, that does make me want to give up sometimes. I'm just like, what's the point? <laughs> Mm. this is the anpothrocene you know the anpothrocene will be marked by a layer of plastic in the stratosphere i totally understand like i get bummed out but um ultimately what i want to say is that we create our own reality the mushroom allows us to heal our minds and our imaginations so we are the healers in our mm. lives the earth is the source of all medicine and if the mushroom is speaking to you, I would say stay open to what's possible. Expect miracles because the mushrooms are uh, definitely the gatekeepers to new dimensions of being. Hmm. And I have gratitude that I am working with them and communicating with you. And I hope that whoever needs to hear this, hears this and hello. <laughs> 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 thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you shared and thank you also mushroom and plant spirits that guided our conversation today and um brought their messages and medicine forth through you this has been really really exciting thank you anna <laughs> And thanks to all our listeners who are here with us today, sharing this space. May the mushroom be with you. <laughs> and if you've enjoyed today's show and would like to support the podcast, one of the best ways to do so is to share about it with your friends, to subscribe in your favorite podcasting app, and to leave a review on iTunes. I'd also love to connect to you to hear how this podcast has touched you, who you are, and you can email me at anahita at flowering she .com. let's connect and until next time <laughs>